Hi there friends, we just had community friend and colleague Jamal on our new episode of Desktops in the Cloud, one of the global black belts of the Windows Virtual Desktop team, and as well old FS Linux veteran just like me. Hi everybody. And Jim just shared with us how you can save space and money on your FS Logix deployments and some really cool demos. Join us because we're starting right now. Hi there friends, and welcome to Desktops in the Cloud, your new technical driven video podcast with guest speakers from Microsoft Engineering and as well the worldwide virtual desktop communities. And thanks for joining Desktops in the Cloud this week. If you're interested in participating in an episode, ping us on social media or our website, desktopsinthecloud.com. So for this new episode, we have community friend and colleague Jim Moll as guest, one of the global black belts of the Windows Virtual Desktop team. He's going to share everything around how to save costs and money on Azure. Who doesn't like that, right? So hi, Jim. How are you? Hey, Christian. Hey, Dean. I'm very well, actually. So we know you, of course, right? But can you tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself? I've been involved in desktop uh, virtualization for 20 odd years. I'm a, I'm a lot older than I look on, uh, on video. Um, I've been a, a CTP, which if for the for the Microsoft people, it's like an MVP, but for uh, Citrix for uh, for many years as well. Many community events. Um, I was your colleague at FS Logix, of course, before uh, the acquisition uh, by Microsoft, and uh, and now I'm just enjoying the new times at Microsoft with and uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So, Jim, every script and tool has a first line of code. Everything has a beginning. Can you tell us where your tool has started? Yeah, so this was several years ago um, when I was at a customer, and they were, at the time, the largest FS Logics customer, and they had 40,000 uh, disks sitting on their storage on-premises, not in the cloud at the time. And uh, I was there for three days maximum, and he said, uh, we have problems with performance, with our storage, and we also have problems with capacity. And they were, they were linked, actually, due to the type of storage that they had. So we needed to reduce capacity. And they said, uh, how do we do this? I'm like, I don't know. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me do some Googling. And uh, uh, my PowerShell skills are OK. They're, they're not too bad. So, uh, so after a bit of Googling, I wrote some PowerShell and managed to uh, reduce the size of the uh, disks on their storage and then get my flight home on time, which was uh, which is a good thing to happen. And uh, and after doing a similar thing for other customers, it's like okay, this is time now time to make this a consumable thing that everybody can use, rather than me rewriting it for for different customers. So it's always fun to hear those, uh, yeah, those stories behind, uh, yeah, a starting point of a script or something that sm starts small and uh, eventually becomes a very uh, yeah, popular tool. So can you share us some examples of uh, yeah, what you can achieve with your uh, solution? So uh, I've got um, some customer quotes because you you said that uh, that this would be a nice thing to have. So. Uh, I haven't made any of these people up. There's one sort of uh, from me in the bottom left-hand corner, but um, the top one from from Manuel Winkle, who's also known as Dade, I see, um, it managed to save 90%, which is the most I've ever heard anybody say that they saved. So thank you for that, uh, Manuel. And uh, and we also see uh, Zenat Blog uh, and uh, Thomas Parker, both of them, and Steve Greenberg, all well known in the community, who all use this uh, this uh, this script, and. Um, I think one of the nicest things possible that you can have as a compliment is that other people are starting to contribute code to this to the script. And if your tool has become that popular that, that other people want to help as well, then that's a, a sign of a of a of a great uh, a great a healthy community. Yeah, that's 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 the power of the community. Um, yeah, um, if we didn't have a community that builds on top of like freeware tools or freeware solutions, we would not have that uh, as of today, right? So um, this, all those examples definitely made us curious. So we, we, we want to see it. Can you demonstrate a little bit about your tool? Yeah, absolutely. So let's do something first, which is uh, let's look at why we need it. So here's a fairly new profile. It's only got half a gig's worth of, uh, worth of data in there. And um, 
and we're going to take a look at the, the stats on that disk, right? So uh, that's in bytes is the maximum size of this uh, VHD. And if we just look and put that uh, into a variable divided by uh, a gig, uh, we'll see that this is actually the default size for an FSLG disk, which is uh, 30,000 megabytes or 29.3 gigabytes. So we've got 500 meg in there, and the maximum size is, is 30 gig. Let's do something particularly silly. And let's uh, copy the entire contents of Visual Studio out of my uh, program files. And let's stick it into my, my documents folder. Now, I know that this isn't something that people would do. But um, it is a good way to demonstrate what's happening. Because not only do we have um, tens of thousands of files in this folder, um, we've also got, um, I think it's like five or six gigs worth of capacity. Now, we're not going to wait. So I'm going to speed this demonstration up a little bit as we copy all those files into uh, into the My Docs folder. And let's look back at uh, back at the disk underneath. All right, and that has expanded in size to accommodate that whole uh, folder from uh, Visual Studio. All, all of this is exactly as you would expect, right? So what people don't expect is, is what happens next. So you let's delete that uh, delete that folder from inside the, my documents. And we're going to see what happens to the size of the disk. And that disk is only by native going to expand. It is never going to contract. So the fact that that disk has been that size in the past means that it will never, without intervention, come down in size from that point. Now, VHDs are kind of special, um, because what we can do is we can actually do exactly the same thing again, and we're now we're really going to speed it up and see what happens again to uh, that disk. Is it going to be double the size? Is it going to be the same size? Well, it's actually going to be the same size. So this is what I mean about this going to be the high watermark of data in past history. But if you add more data, it will use existing white space. So it's not as bad as it could be. But it turns out that um, due to various applications checking for space and grabbing five gigs of disk space and then releasing it, you can end up with a huge amount of white space in these disks. So how do we fix it? Well. If we look uh, straight in front of us, we've got a couple of things. We've got some uh, in, some test environments in the top left. And let me make sure it's playing. There we go with um, just some random uh, disks just to show you. Uh, so these are actually real disks from uh, different environments. And taking uh, 40 gigs size on disk. And we can see disk management there. We haven't got anything mounted. And uh, we're running this in PowerShell version 5.1 also supports 7 as well. Let's have a look at the command we're running. So simple ps1 file. Let's give it a path to um, the VHDs. We're going to recurse through those directories. So we're going to get everything. Pass through will give us an object so we can see something on the screen. And you know what? We're going to ignore some small disks because we're not going to get much space back by trying to shrink a disk that's already very small. Now, we can see on the right-hand side that we've got many disks mounted simultaneously. And we're going through each one. And we're trying to shrink those down uh, to the minimum possible. Now, we can see that some of them are, are um, uh, skipped because they're already the minimum size. Some of them are ignored because they're less than one gigabyte. And some of them are successfully shrunk. And we can see that um, we've got the space saved in there. Anything from uh, from sort of like one and above uh, above space saved in in gigs. All right, so that's uh, super simple in terms of uh, what you get in the output from the PowerShell script. We also will get a nice log file uh, with all of the same information that we got because we put passer as a parameter to uh, to the script, and we can see they ignored. And actually, on those. 
real life disk we've saved uh, 25 gigs out of 40. All right, so a 62% reduction in capacity use. Now, if you're on-prem and you're running out of space on your storage, that's a good improvement. If you're in the cloud and you're um, you know, paying by usage, that's a good improvement on cost. And I think on the first run, somewhere between um, 40 and 60% reduction in capacity is what I would expect for, uh, for that first, uh, first run. In terms of subsequent runs, uh, you'll obviously gain less, um, but depending on uh, what your workload is in, in particular. So that's how it works. So that's that's pretty awesome, Jim. Um, a quick question for you. You know, we've been talking about FS logics, and usually some folks may find that in the context of Windows Virtual Desktop. But can this be used in Citrix and VMware environments? And is there any limitation about the the backend storage in using this? So if you're doing desktop virtualization of any kind, uh, whether it's uh, Citrix or VMware or Parallels um, or WVD or even native RDSH, you can use this wherever you like. And um, pretty much if, it, if it's a Windows virtualization and this only works with Windows, so you know we're, we're good there, uh, then you're licensed for use for, for FS Logics. So yes, it's pretty universal that people have picked up this uh, technology and and, uh, and are using it for their profiles with a, with, a, with a pooled desktop. And from what I remember, a, a process around uh, shrinking would be very IO intensive. Uh, is there a predicted load for this script? There is. So um, on the storage, which by the way should be SMB and not anything else, it's not too bad in terms of IO because I'm not actually moving any blocks around. But there are a lot of pointers and file system actions being used. So it's really intensive on your disk controllers rather than the disks themselves. But the real resource constraint is the CPU cores on the VM that you're running the script from. So by default, uh, it will use eight threads. So you should have two threads per core um, maximum. Um, but it will absolutely uh, pin your CPU if you configure more threads than you are supposed to. So when you need to run the script, if, you've got, uh, if you need to run it quickly, then stick a whole lot of cores at the VM where you're running the script from. OK, so it would be your recommendation to that customers run this in off hours uh, at night, that kind of thing as well. Yeah, so I have people who run it during the day um, as like emergency remedy, but anything that's already mounted, it can't do anything with, right? It has to be dismounted to be um, to be shrunk. So it's only going to catch the people who are who aren't logged in that day. To catch the most disks, then maintenance window, 3 a.m. or Sunday morning, uh, that sort of thing is absolutely is going to gain you the most capacity back. So, where can people find um, the script? Um, well, Tradi traditionally, we, we would say that uh, it would be GitHub, which would be uh, github.com. It's actually on the FS Logic repository. And um, it's called Invoke FSL Shrink. And you can see the, uh, the URL in front of you. It is fully documented. Um, it should be, hopefully, very easy to use. Um, and if you, if, you follow, if you read the documentation, then it be, should be fine. And is it supported officially by Microsoft? Or? So it is not supported officially by Microsoft. This is purely a community effort. Uh, this is something that I do in my spare time. Um, and the other people who have com com uh, contributed towards the repository are also doing that in their spare time. So if you raise an issue on the repository, I will try and help as best as I can. But, uh, but no, it's definitely not an officially supported product. So that brings me to uh, to the other question. So you are basically driving the roadmap here. So uh, are there any future plans that you can share? And what do people have, or what do viewers have to do if they want to have an extra feature in your tool? So um, they can uh, they can uh, just go to the repository and, and communicate through there. I've got my uh, e uh, email is open through there. So if you if you've got a feature request, just submit it. Um, some of the future plans that uh, um, I'm looking at this is as always not a guarantee. Um, 
a lot of people have asked uh, for what if support. They they want to run it against a whole set of disks and and try and see what kind of uh, savings they're going to get for capacity without actually changing anything. A reasonable ask. So uh, so I think uh, adding what if is uh, is something that's definitely uh, going to happen. Also to remove uh, remove caches. So if you've perhaps uh, had a single profile disk and you and you and you're breaking it into a profile in Office 365 that will leave all the old caches in a disk and people need to clean those out. Or in an emergency, if you absolutely have to save space, then uh, the ability to remove the caches from inside the disk and then shrink it would be a would be a good one. And this last one, well, I mean, this is the community watching this, right? The whole uh, script requires uh, admin access because we need to mount that disk to uh, defrag it and then we can shrink it which means that I can't run it as far as I know from an Azure function and I would love to because that would enable a serverless fan out thing uh, be great for WVD but as yet I haven't found a way to do it so if we've got anybody out there in the audience who can uh, who who's sitting there going I know how to do this then please get in touch uh, and can uh, contact me through the, through the, the repository yeah, that's that's definitely the power of the community. So, uh, yeah, everyone, feel free to to join and contribute. Um, always looking for for help around everything we do in the community. So, thanks for joining us, Jim. How how can people follow you around social media? And um, so, uh, Jim Moyle is my handle on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, and for other projects on GitHub as well. So, um, follow me all those three places. This has been great looking at how we can save money and reduce space uh, using FS Logics and your shrinking script. And if you've been enjoying our episode, make sure that you subscribe to DITC on our YouTube channel and click the like button wherever you're viewing this. And thanks for joining us today. We will catch you in our next episode.